So in the last video we planned out how we want our first person player controller to look and feel, and set up version control for the project. Now I'm gonna hop in Blender and go over the design process. So basically, based on how I outlined my player controller, in Blender I need to design the 3D model, rig the model with an armature, create animations for it, and then finally I'll export the model to Godot. So to be honest, I'm recycling a model that I made for another project. So you can see from the gameplay footage that the zombie and the player are wearing the same clothes. Now before I go into my Blender workflow, I just want to note that I am using version 2.9.2 due to hardware limitations. Godot 4 has some options for compatibility with Blender versions past 3, so in this case I won't be using any of that. So to design the character, I just started with a cube, subdivided once, and using the mirror modifier, I reshaped it to be a head. Extruded the neck down, and made more extrusions to make the body and appendages. I just use basic 3D modeling techniques, so there are plenty of tutorials out there showing all the different ways you can create your character, doesn't matter. And since I was reusing a low poly character model for my player model, the hands looked terrible, so I actually created more loop cuts around the hands and relaxed the vertices to make it look smoother. I also just completely removed the head since that is where the camera is going to be going. So once I finished designing the character, I had to create a control rig before I could start animating. Again, there are more than enough tutorials on how to create an armature, but for the feet specifically, I followed this tutorial series by Darren Lyle. The way he sets up the foot bones allows you to easily roll the foot back on its heel and forward onto its toes using one control bone and constraints. So I highly recommend you check out those videos. They're old videos, so he uses an earlier version of Blender, but the principles and design are still relevant. So now that we have our armature, next we need to animate the character. For the sake of animating, I created a dedicated camera bone to which the camera is parented. I also went ahead and started thinking of how I wanted the hands to track with the camera, so I created a hands bone and applied a copy rotation constraint to both hand bones and then apply the copy rotation constraint on that for the camera bone. Now if I position the hands in front of the camera and rotate the camera bone, the hands track with the camera. The idea for this is that I will create a pose action for the camera looking up, down, left, and right, and even upper and lower left and right. And then in Godot, I can blend them all together with the camera's rotation relative to the body's rotation as the blend value. To make these poses, I would have to decide on the maximum angle that I want my camera to be able to rotate from the body. So I figured 20 degrees left and right sounded good, so I created an action for each of those positions and keyframed the camera centered with a 900 frame long idle animation. Then with the camera and the hands rotated in all their maximum positions and separate actions named accordingly. All I did was copy and paste this idle animation into each action, and then rotated the camera bone whichever direction I needed. Then after that, for each arm, I created a jab, punch, and a hook, punch animation. Then using the same process as with the hand placement animations, I just rotated the punch animation with the camera bone to have each punch going up, forward, or down, and then just adjusted the bones to look nice. Like I said in the last video, I wanted to have the body realign with the camera when punching in game, and I didn't want to worry about making sure all the punches looked good in the left or right directions, so I just did up, forward, and down to make it easier on me. So the idea will be whenever you trigger the punch animation, the body will just align itself forward with the camera, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Lastly, I created a simple walking animation and running animation. So now that I created all my animations, I want to make a separate rig, a game rig, to be imported into Godot. 
I only want to export deformation bones, not all the control bones that I used to animate the model. So all I did was duplicate the armature and deleted all the bones that weren't needed for deforming the mesh, like the elbow pole bones, knee pole bones, and the foot and hand IK bones. But now, if I went to the mesh's armature modifier and switch it to the game rig, there will be an issue. Now that we deleted all the control bones, there is nothing telling those bones where to go. To fix this, we need to bake all our animations. As it is now, the only bones that have keyframes are the control bones. When we bake the animation, it will add keyframes for all the selected bones, so that the control bone keyframes won't be needed. To do this, I press F3, type bake action, put the frame count, visual keying, check overwrite. Now since all the bones in the game rig have the same names as the one in the control rig, the bones will now be correctly animated. Now the last thing we need to do before we export everything to Godot is push each animation to its own track on the NLA stack in the NLA editor. If we open up the NLA editor over here, and then down here in the action editor, we select an animation, then come over to the NLA stack and push. Rename the action. And uncheck all the boxes so that the animations aren't blended together. So now we have our fully animated and game ready first person player model and we are ready to export this model to Godot 4. Like I said before, I'm using Blender version 2.9.2, so I'm just going to export this as .gltf. So select the mesh and the rig and then go to file then export. And then you're going to want to go to whichever folder you want to save your player model to. In this include drop down, you're just going to select selected objects only. Then down in transform, make sure that Y up is selected. In geometry, you can go ahead and click apply modifiers. Keep UVs, normals, and vertex colors, whatever you have for your project. And then in animation, I'm just going to uncheck limit to playback range because I don't need it. And then I will check export deformation bones only for shape keys, that's all good there. And then make sure skinning is checked and you can go ahead and press export. Now to import this scene into Godot, I'm going to open up a new project in Godot. I'm just gonna name this first person shooter. And then once Godot is up, I'll drag and drop the .glb file into my resource bin. Double click to bring up the advanced export options. Alright, and then here you can see that Blender's GLTF exporter also exported the control rig even though it wasn't selected. So I'll click on the highest node in that control rig hierarchy and select skip import. Then I'm going to click Actions, and I want to save all these animations as their own resources. So I create an animations folder to put them in. Lastly, we go down to the Animation Player node. Go to the If Present All combo boxes, and I'm going to select If Present. Otherwise, all the animations will contain keyframe tracks for the control rig as well as the game rig, and we don't want that. I'm going to also turn off Optimizer. And now we can select re-import, and we're done. The player model is imported into Godot. I'm just going to test it out by dragging and dropping the .glb file from the resource bin into the scene. Now if you want to make sure that the animation's imported correctly, you can select the animation player node and go through each animation. So in the next video, I'm going to set up our test scene, and I will explain the Godot side of setting up this player controller. Thanks for watching.